think about Super Moon Bakehouse, you're talking about shooting, you know, rocket to the moon like Dogecoin. They know what's hitting. Over the past few years, regular American comfort food has gotten a bad rap. If any American food is trending, it's new American, which usually has a lot of French and other international influence. But who are the people that are reinventing lunchroom classics like the corn dog, grilled cheese sandwich, or bagel? And can they even be saved? Today, we're trying to find out. Now, I think that Southern breakfast culture has spread across America. One thing I noticed about Brooklyn is they do value some sort of hipster artsification of Southern cuisine. So, I mean, what do you know about pies and dimes? Yo, they actually had a location on the Lower East Side and ever since I had that, it changed my life and how I feel about chicken and waffles. Yo, they have some pretty cool looking things in there, man. Let's check it out. All right, in front of us, we have a lovely spread of elevated Southern comfort food. Now, the two chefs and owners who started Pies and Thighs, you know, they were working in the food industry at high-level restaurants, but they came together and they wanted to deliver Southern comfort to New York City. Right, they were from Connecticut, but they had a love for Southern comfort food. Hey. We have chicken and waffles. Well, actually the pairing is from Harlem, but we have grits and catfish. So of course that's very Southern. We have the chicken and biscuit here. We have black eyed peas salad, which is like a soup. And then we have your pork gravy here. And then of course your house made sweet tea and Arnold Palmer and your sour cherry and peach pie. I think first things first, this just oh. needs to. My God. And you know, Andrew, I met a man outside, a grandfather, who was insistent that this is better than a lot of spots in Louisiana. I think it's a lot better than, I have it, they have it all together. But the first thing I ask these people, are you from Louisiana? No, they're not, they're from Connecticut or some damn place. I'm going in on the catfish, man. First bite of the chicken and waffles. This is the best cheese and grits I ever had in my life. Really? No, Andrew, I'm not gonna lie, this, this looked really good. I need to get a slice of this. Mm. Guys, I'm making a mess, but you know what? With good food. I think you can get good fried chicken in a lot of places. But I'll tell you this about the catfish. That is some of the big best southern catfish that I've ever had the pleasure of partaking in for my entirety on this planet. I'm gonna see if I agree and I concur with your opinion. I do declare that pies and thighs is quite tasty. This is my favorite fried chicken spot I think I've ever had in my life, honestly. Yeah? Guys, I gotta try this really, really southern traditional dish. This is the black eyed peas okay. salad. You know, straight up. I think as Southern breakfasts become more uh, national, in the sense that they used to maybe only be isolated in that region, and now it's sort of like everywhere. Like we said, McDonald's has buttermilk chicken biscuits and things like that that you used to only be able to find in the South. I think that this is still like pushing the top end up. And I think also like that's the beauty about living in New York City is that like you get every type of food that you want on any corner you get and why not have a fried chicken spot? This is the absolute best chicken and biscuit I've ever had in my entire life. This chicken is marinated, it's brined, it's spicy, and the gravy is good. Guys, if you come to Pies and Thighs, man, you gotta get the chicken and biscuits and the grits here. Now, in 2021, as much as classic American comfort foods are being elevated, sometimes an elevation is actually just taking it back to the old school. So we're in front of Ace's Pizza right now, and their whole concept is they want a shop that feels exactly like they did when they were 15. But they're doing some more different fun little things here by giving you like a cheeseburger slice, almost reminding you of something that you would make at home. The decor in there is nice, it's nostalgic. A spot like Ace's Pizza, I bet you that the guy's from Brooklyn, from New York City, and he just has that New York City culture. And let's check it out. All right, you guys, we're here with the uh, owner of Ace's Pizza, the whole 90s theme. Matt, can you tell us what you guys are trying to do? Because you, you just get some crazy throwback vibes. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I'm an A's baby, so I, I grew up going to going to Pizza Hut when it was like a restaurant. And when I found Detroit style, I just I just fell in love with it. It, it really married well with with that the vibes of of you know what I was saying with like Pizza Hut and, and and that sort of pizza restaurant. And so I wanted to create that space and that type of pizza. And we're looking at a cheeseburger slice with bacon on it. This is a uh, bacon cheeseburger. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger pizza. pizza. Detroit style pizza, honestly, I think is my favorite style pizza. Next up, of course, you've got a buffalo slice. Now, this is not uncommon, but this one, they give you the celery and the ranch and everything. Buffalo, buffalo chicken, chicken slice. slice. That's the best buffalo chicken slice I've ever had. It just tastes way more like 
game day Buffalo wings. Yes. And of course, you can't have a retro like 1992 theme spot without some retro wings. Got their adobo one, which is a little bit more using some Spanish seasoning version of lemon pepper in Nashville. So that's just not a regular spicy wing. That's like Nashville, which is a very particular Tennessee seasoning that's becoming more popular in 2021. Adobo. adobo. Spanish adobo. Wow, that was the juiciest wing I've ever had. Wow, wow. Surprisingly juicy for such a small wing. Yeah. It cooked perfectly here. Ooh. Natural hot. You know what? It needs a little, a little more salt. And last but not least, guys, we have a mushroom slice with three different types of mushrooms on it. The shiitake slice. Oh, lots of Go. garlic and everything. I'm gonna Go. move this shiitake in this by, oh. This is actually my favorite slice here so far. I think that this place kind of altered my mind that you could pick a specific era, like a moment in your life from like 1993, you're in a shop that opened up in 1979 and you're elevating that exact same flavor and menu that you had in 1993. So yeah, I think it's a very cool nostalgic place for sure, but that kitchen is ahead of its time. You're saying there's an old school vibe and a new school flavor here. Yes. So our next spot is Village Square Pizza. Now it doesn't look like the craziest pizza shop in the world, but what they're doing is super low key, is reinventing the traditional New York Italian slice shop. All right, so we got our three slices here at Village Square. Look, they made their pep spicy from the get-go. It's baked into the sauce, and then they're baking stuff with honey on top of the white slice, and they give you the option of Mike's Red Hot Honey, and of course, the vodka slice, which is gaining popularity over the past five years. Spicy, spicy pepper honey. Look at the sweetness of it, I mean. I hope that there's more pep slices like this. I think pep is perfect when it's spicy. I'm gonna give this right here a five out of five. White, white slice, slice with honey. honey. So this is your traditional white slice. It's got a glop of, uh, glop, is that a word? Of ricotta cheese on top. And there's regular honey on top of it. And then it's baked. And then he put Mike's hot honey on top. Of it. Man, who said pizza can't be sweet? Square, square vodka, vodka slice. slice. There's not a lot of vodka slices that come on a square. This is definitely my second favorite vodka slice in the world. Number one, I, I, gotta, I gotta give the upside though. Village Square Pizza sets the tone for the future of New York pizza. They're doing it at a high quality. They're doing traditional flavors. And I love the attitude The people are super nice here. Yeah. And even some of the owners and partners are Asian. So, you know. All right, you guys, we're at Tompkins Bagels. It's been a favorite in New York City for 10 years. An NYU crowd, the East Village crowd, very progressive neighborhood. By the way, their, their regular bagels are some of them, my favorite too. Oh, my, this is my, my go-to bagel spot. Dessert, Dessert bagels. The cream cheese has very much like a cheesecake vibe to it. I think it's a cinnamon spread, right? With cookie dough and, and the chocolate chips. I mean, this is more of a dessert than anything. Yeah, I had a French toast style bagel with cream cheese icing and then the birthday cake on its own. Oh man. They're changing just as the world is changing. And I recommend everybody do that as well. We got garlic tofu, we got the savory options. Of course, classic bacon, egg and cheese on a bagel. Right? And then we got the cream cheese, scallion and bacon, pumpkin nickel, everything bagel. Cause if it's not an everything bagel, it's not New York City. Yo, it's luck. Thank you. That is way better than I thought. It's it just like cream cheese, like wow. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. All right, you guys, we are talking about reinvented American classic foods. You have so many different options. And obviously some of the people reinventing the classic American foods are from overseas. And South Korea is one of the main, that comes up with wacky versions of classic American things. I got an injul mi dog right here, which is sort of a Korean barley wheat dust. It's sweet. I got a rice crispy one. Marco, you think this looks weird? That looks a little strange. I don't <laughs> know. Classic hot dog corn dog. And this one is the potato dog. I've never seen one Italian eat a corn dog before. That one, <laughs> they're, they're that like, one. Hey, they took a look at it. I need mean, that. Uh, Green corn, corn dogs. dogs. Oh, I'm excited for this one. Pretty good. I mean, dessert and lunch at the same time. Yeah. These are the real flavors from Korea. All right, guys, I'm jumping in for David. This is the two hands, so it has their own special blend. So actually what I'm getting from this two hands one is some of that kind of like Asian snack flavoring that's salty but sweet. This one's a very, very Asian one. Spicy Cheeto dust. It's really good, actually. All right, guys, when it comes to my favorite dog here at Two Hands, I think you gotta try the spicy dog. It gives you enough of that original, true blue American corn dog feeling, which I actually do love corn dogs. I used to eat them all the time. Man, this is like the elevated version. And this just has all the flavors of the American one, but just way more spice. It's a high quality glizzy right there. 
All right, so our next food on our reinvented American food crawl, it is the grilled cheese sandwich. So we're here at Cheese Grill over in the Lower East Side, and they're here trying to master anything cheesy. Here I have the goat. It's gonna have apple, avocado, bacon, and goat cheese. You have the Mediterranean. I'm, I'm eating the Mediterranean grilled cheese. Uh, I think I like it because it, it's a Mediterranean, and that's what I am. I mean, to be honest, with all these ingredients packed in here, it's pretty different than your original grilled cheese, you know, using the Kraft single, so. That mm. truffle oil is everything to this grilled cheese, though. Oh my God. I never ate a grilled cheese sandwich that has this much flavor to it. All right, guys, we gotta try this elevated buffalo chicken mac and cheese. The manager told me they're trying to perfect the mac and cheese, all things cheese, here. All right, let's try this. Buffalo chicken mac and cheese. Is this the best mac and cheese in New York City? I could just keep on eating this and eating this and eating this and not say anything. That's how you know it's good. This spot really embodies what we're trying to do in this video, which is try out classic American comfort foods taken to another level. Classic American comfort food, but turned up a notch. All right, on to our next spot. But I gotta try what is said to be the actual best mac and cheese in the city here at S-Mac, all right? There's all types of people here. I think there's like some music artists here. They have the largest variety of mac and cheeses that I've ever seen in my entire life. They have over thousands and thousands of Yelp reviews. All right, so this is actually a spot I've been meaning to come to because I ride my scooter up and down First Ave all the time. But uh, actually being here, I realized how wacky mac and cheese spots can be. All right, I'm going with the Italian one because you know, I gotta do it for the culture. You gotta rep for your people here. I'm getting rep. the French one. Straight off, just wow. aesthetics are killing cheese grill. Oh my gosh. Elevated, Elevated mac and cheese. Oh, we oh, wait, no. wait, 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 oh, wait, wait, Who won that battle? It was not the same noodle. It was just the same piece of cheese. <laughs> oh Whoa. man. Whoa. That's five good. out of five for that one. The Italian one, the Nepritana. We got a five out of five. The flavors were there. The mozzarella cheese was amazing. It's definitely the best mac and cheese I've ever had. All right, next one, I'm going up for the fennel mac and cheese, and you're about to try the Yair. Yo, as far as the fennel one, reminds me of like a sausage or a kielbasa. It was that slab of bacon that did it for me, man. I mean, amazing. For the Cajun one, this one, and you're going for the four cheese four one, Marco. Four cheese, wow. actually. I think the Cajun one was great because it really felt like all the flavors were cooked together and it wasn't just Cajun sauce thrown on top of it. It's like almost like a pasta dish that you get in Italy with the four cheeses and your little pasta. It's a little bit of quattro formaggio. All right, last but not least, we got the All-American and then we have the Cheeseburger American. I'm gonna go with the All-American because you know what? I grew up eating All-American Kraft mac and cheese. That's what I fell in love with. I mean, it's good, it's good. I got a new favorite. Marco, we just ate at two different types of mac and cheese spots. Uh, what's your major takeaway? From it all. I thought there was gonna be a lot just white people, honestly. When I seen, you know, when I walked past and I was like, wait a second. Yeah. It's really diverse. That's how good the mac and cheese is. Yeah. That is for everybody. All American comfort foods are kind of like a blank canvas for all types of people to kind of dive into it. To be honest, this is the best mac and cheese overall that I've ever had in my life. All right, you guys, we're at Emmy Squared right now. Now, this place is really interesting because it's coming out of New York City and spreading across America, but it's not owned by Italians. Marco, how do you feel about that? Honestly, I was surprised. I thought I, I walked in there. It used to be an Italian restaurant there, so I'm like, all right, let's check it out. So the fact that these people who opened up the shop are not Italian, it sort of allows them to kind of be free from tradition, right? For better or worse. And now they're doing Nashville hot chicken pizzas. They have a stuffed potato pizza. This is the elevation of sort of like Anglo pizza. Hot, hot chicken, chicken pizza. pizza. It's like a little spicy, but a nice little sweetness to it. That's so good. I think Emmy Squared is great if you're trying to eat anything but the traditional pizza flavors. There's no marinara sauce on that. It really tastes like a fluffy breadstick with the hot chicken on top. It is delicious, but it does not really remind me of pizza. Stuffed potato pizza. For me, I'm gonna go with the hot chicken pizza. Um, this one tastes a little bit too carby for me, yeah. but both are actually really good. I love the pizza. I love new things. I love trying new things. I'm open-minded to anything. Potato on pizza, I would never thought, but I give it both a five out of five. Our next classic food being reinvented for 2021 may not be a globe, you know, national American classic, but certainly is a New York classic. We're talking about falafel. My whole life, normally, I would just get it from the corner vendor, and uh, it would be greasy with rice, with their falafel. Let's check it out. Well, 100% vegan, kosher. We don't use any dairy, no meat. This is all plant-based. Everything is made of love, and it's, I'm thinking you're gonna enjoy it. All right, in front of us, you are looking at 
vegan kosher falafel. This dish looks clean. I mean, the falafel that I'm usually getting is doesn't not look as nice like it like it does now. That was good. That is oh, yeah. really, really good. Yeah. I got an eggplant pita sandwich. This is almost looking like cow tongue right here. This is amazing looking. I have not been excited to eat something vegan like this in a while. That's one of the best vegan sandwiches I've ever had in my life. I just feel like there's so much more flavor. And usually when I have falafel from all those places, when you bite it, it's kind of like hard and it doesn't have like no taste sometimes. It feels like you're eating rubber almost like. A lot of vegan food kind of has this like, sometimes like a sour taste to me. And this is just smooth and creamy. And this totally minimizes the downside of anything vegan. It's super smooth. It's Israeli really sodas. sodas. Guys, strawberry banana apple soda looks so good. Okay, so it's a flat, non-carbonated yeah. kind of juice. Really good, not too sweet. Try a bite. David, you talking real tough about this eggplant sandwich. I have to try it. Let's go. Oh my God. Bro. It's good, right? Best eggplant pita I've ever had. It's just really cool to see that there's different levels of falafel. You can get it off the cart late at night at 2 a.m. You can pay a little extra, sit outside at Tamam right here. So, and I'm not even the biggest fan of falafel to be honest, but this is fire. What you are looking at is quite possibly the best cookies in New York City. We're at Levain Bakery right across from Kith. These are their big cookie. Levain Bakery, they start out in Harlem. They did so good whenever I would go there in Harlem, the line would be packed out to the door. Ultra, Ultra thick, thick cookies. cookies. Yo, wow. Andrew, milk right now with this? Oh, definitely the best cookie I've ever had. My favorite flavor though is a chocolate chocolate chip because who doesn't like right. chocolate chocolate chip cookies? My goodness, man. I don't know how much higher you can take cookies. Only in Manhattan will you find a $4 cookie. Yes, across the street from a crazy nice golden spot. All right, you guys, we just came from Kith. And uh, Kith is a really cool boutique streetwear store that sort of reinvented the way people sell ice cream. You know, a lot of the items in there are like $100 to $1,000. So obviously they figured the best way to allow people to have some of a piece of Kith without paying that price tag was to open up an ice cream shop. It's really trendy, it's really cool. They're doing a ton of stuff. This is uh, sponsored by Action Bronson. He had like nine different things in here. It's a blended ice cream with cereal in it. A lot of people have since, you know, taken this cue. But, uh, and I'm not saying that, you know, Kif didn't get it from somewhere else, but they were definitely the first people to make it popular. There's like 15 different things in here. To be honest, Kith Treats is the only thing that a lot of people buy in there because Kit can be so expensive. But uh, I think it's a really cool addition. I do think that other stores are gonna attempt to do it. I know that they had a standalone in Tokyo when we were there, but even before the Kith retail came in. Since Kith Treats popped up a few years ago, I think I've seen a lot more cafes attached to streetwear stores. So as far as popularizing that trend, I gotta give it to Kith. And I do think this is the next evolution of a cafe. Yo, Mark, Kith has the best ice cream in the United States of America. And even in their store, Tokyo. And today we secured the bag as well as the ice cream. What do you want to do? Continuing our crawl of hype bakeries that are pretty much new for 2021. Uh, we're in front of Supermoon Bakehouse. It's from Australia. Um, some of the owners are Australian, some of the owners are Asian, but it is a foreign thing. They got way more going on here than American pastry. They, they kind of look like some sort of exhibit that Kanye would be inspired by for his next piece. This is a strawberry almond croissant, but it has like the baked almond cream in it, dry, freeze dried strawberry powder on top, edible glass here on top. So here we have the triple coffee chocolate croissant. Oh, here we have the a chili cheese danish. And then here we have a balsamic strawberry jam plus vanilla cream inside of a donut. So they didn't have any of the matcha flavors today. No, this week they see they switch it up week by week. Pick the wrong week. I mean, these look crazy. Let me, I gotta break this open for the people, man. Dude, man. Wow. Mmm. Guys, if you've ever had an almond croissant, this is next level, man. This is done. This, this, this is the best almond croissant I've ever had. It's done on a different level. This. <clears throat> they try to make everything look intergalactic here. Same with their branding. <clears throat> Super moon. <clears throat> Triple chocolate coffee croissant. That might even have been better than the almond one. Chili Danish, man, you know. That has a lot of flavor, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Mel got crushed by Super Moon. When you think about Super Moon Bakehouse, you're talking about shooting, you know, rocket to the moon like Dogecoin. Wow. Oh my. Get Jam out of and here. cream. Fly me to the moon. Everything at Super Moon Bakehouse was super good. 
And um, there's very few spots that live up to the hype, guys. But I'll tell you this, Supermoon Bakery lives up to the hype. I give it a 4.5 out of 5. I think if you're visiting New York, and you have like one or two bakeries to go to, I can see you going to, you know, Dominic Ansel's just to get the, the pro nut, but then come here. Andrew, from the brunch spots, the avocado toasts, to the Supermoon Bakehouses, why do you think Australians almost, in a way, do a better version of Western culture than American Western people? And this is my theory. They don't have as many different ethnicities. So for example, you're not gonna find amazing Caribbean food or amazing Mexican food. They focus more on their own Western culture and their brunch food. So that's why their flat whites are world famous, their avocado toasts are world famous, their bakery items, things like that. They know what's hitting. Andrew, Hype Beast Bakeries. It's consumed in the same way that a Hype Supreme drop might be bought out. Well, I'll tell you this, when you have lines outside of a bakery, things sell out quickly, people are waiting for the drop, it definitely feels pretty hype. So we're outside of Mel over in the Lower East Side, and basically their mission here is to focus on the flour of the bakery item. Elevated cookie sandwich, here you have an elevated brownie with sunflower seeds, which is a little different. This is a elevated pecan honey bun. Here you have the in-house made flour for the uh, chocolate chip cookie. Then you have a sourdough chocolate croissant. David, what are you, your, your pick, man, go in. Sourdough. Wow. Bread. I'm going in with the honey bun. Oh, it's the flakiest pastry on planet Earth. Where can you eat that properly? Bro, this is crispy. It's crunchy. It's sticky in your mouth. It's sticking in it. This is really bad. Dentists would not like this one. All in all, my opinion on hype bakeries as far as an American elevated classic, I would say that some are going to stay, but most are going to go. This brown is good though. You guys, one food that I know is really, really popular across America, I believe also the UK, is the roast dinner. Thanksgiving foods, your pilgrim foods, your <laughs> cornucopia foods. You're talking about Brussels sprouts, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes. Guys, we're outside of Dig right now. It is one of my favorite kind of like market driven um, bowl spots. This is the reinvented, reimagined, elevated version of all that food. We're talking about delicious broccoli, delicious Brussels sprouts. You know, they might have salmon, but it's very, very American. Let's check it out, dig in. Dude, I can smell it already. I can smell the roasted veggies. And to me, that is the number one trait of digging that I love. So we have our elevated harvest bowls in 2021 here. A little uh, chili pepper tofu. I got mushrooms. I have cauliflower, which is, by the way, for many kids, like the last thing they want to eat. But look, it's charred, it's flavorful, it's seasoned well on a bed of salad. Blackened chicken, I have blackened broccoli. I've got potatoes and mushrooms. I've got farro, which I'm not even sure what that is, but that's one of my bases. The rice and uh, of course the Atlantic salmon, which I don't know if it's Atlantic or not, but you know, yeah. sounds good. Elevated vegetables. You get the vegetables to be this flavorful. I mean, people are gonna keep, keep on going back there. One, it's healthy. Two, it tastes good. It, it is difficult for people to eat their vegetables. It's like all, to convince yeah. people. Yeah. How many times? I don't want green peas, I don't want salad, I don't want this broccoli, it makes me fart. You know what? Just come to dig. All right, how's your guys' protein going so far? Yo, I'm not gonna lie, the salmon mm. is a little overcooked, but it's really, really good. Like, it's, there's, there's a good flavors in there. I mean, it's mm. a good bowl, really good bowl, definitely will come back. This food reminds the average American of the holidays where it's like really good. Like you have your whole family come over and they're all gonna be putting in work to make sure that the dishes are good. But this is like that holiday level food every day. I still like Boston Market though. Ooh, Boston Market is really good. You have to say our honest opinions. Yeah. Everything, this is elevated, but it's not necessarily taste. So you Sometimes you just like what you like. And mm. if they are blue collar tastes, we have to listen to what our heart is telling us. Hey, their chicken leg is good. Marco, what do you know about this like South Korean fried chicken? The American soldiers actually, they brought their flavors to Korea during the war. And ever since they left Korea, they actually like, they actually expanded their, uh, their flavors. Right, what we got here is the original crispy chicken recipe, which is uh, not really double fried. This is just like a Southern style, but they're, they're taking on a southern style. And over here we have double fried spicy chicken wings. I have to roll up my hoodie for this one. Just to show the um, the Korean touches, you have kimchi slaw. You have a yogurt soju drink with LED cube for $1. Yeah. Reinvented, Reinvented fried, fried chicken. chicken. I love the Korean chicken wings because it's spicy, 
but it's like the most flavorful spice that you can get. For me personally, given the choice between sort of the BBQ chicken from Korea, like olive oil style, which is more based off the Southern American style, and the Kyochan Banchan style, I actually pick for myself the BBQ chicken style. I gotta go with the Korean style. Just cause, like I said before, it's flavorful with that spice. Cause usually you'll get like a spicy chicken wing. It doesn't have that like that taste still. I feel like the chicken might taste like rubber more than anything, but I gotta go with these for sure. My non-Asian friends, I definitely think that they would definitely like this. And I think they might prefer it as well because it's really less greasy than any other chicken wing I've ever had before as well. For sure. I think that a lot more people would prefer this if it probably had like a different packaging. So I wouldn't be surprised if you have a place like Domino's that has Korean chicken wings eventually. Cause it's gonna happen. And I wouldn't even be surprised maybe even seeing in the Lower East Side, seeing a Korean spot, owned by maybe white guys, uh, who knows? Who knows? It's 2021, <laughs> 2022, anything's possible. All right, so for our next spot on this new foods you have not seen before crawl, we are outside of Black Seed Bagel. I've never seen pizza like that before. They're putting kale on pizza, they got some soppressata on pizza. Of course, you know, you're Italian, you gotta love that. What you are looking at here are the most elevated pizza bagels ever. I mean, Black Seed Bagel behind us is known for their bagels, world renowned. Here we have the green pie. It has kale, artichoke, no meat, but it looks like it has lots of flavor. Bob's pie, it's got a whole lot of meat, jalapenos, soppressata, you got some pepperoni, everything seasoning, cheese spread. So this is like your regular cheese sticks, except with everything seasoning sprinkled on top of it. Everything, everything bagel, bagel cheese sticks. sticks. I give it a four out of five, it's pretty good. But the only thing that's slightly different is I got a little of that salty everything seasoning on top. Exactly like I'm eating an everything bagel. I'm gonna get 3.5. Next up we got Bob's Pie. This is gonna be like your meat lovers. This is Versada Versada pizza, pizza bagel. bagel. Wow, the flavors in there are crazy. The olives gives it a nice kick. All right, man, I like how they had a lot of different elements there that I don't usually find on pizza. I'm gonna give this slice a four out of five. Five out of five, and I love the super soft. Wow, five out of five from an Italian guy. It means a lot, man. Means a lot, you sure man. you're giving it the five? It's good, but I want to. You want to do that? You only have so many fives to give. I'm gonna give it the five. All right. Give it the five. I gotta. That's your Pull five the for today. That's, That's the five. The five. Uh -huh. All right. Green pie. This is your vegan slice. You have artichokes, peppers, kale, cheese, pesto, everything on it. Let's go. It's tastes, healthy. Tastes like a salad. Yeah. It's pretty good actually for a vegan. You know, I'm not the biggest vegan guy out there. I'm not. I'll be honest. I tried it. I like it. Pretty good. This is elevated pizza bagels. On to the next spot. Amazing. Huh. This is a reinvented American classic, sort of like your American ice cream, American icy, Italian ice, right? Yeah. But this is reinvented, yo, you guys. I have a edible cookie dough. So they've removed the raw egg to make this more edible, platable. And uh, I've got vanilla ice cream sauce serve. I've got chocolate chips. I've got more cookie dough underneath that. Reinvented, reinvented ice, ice cream sandwich. sandwich. You guys, it's deconstructed for 2021. That is amazing. You know what I love about this? It's a new concept, but the way they're doing ice cream there is very old school. The cookie dough tastes old school. The ice cream tastes old school. And you know what? I love old brands like Ralph's 50 years old being able to reinvent themselves without losing the essence of what they do. You guys, in America, there have always been fried fish spots that are loosely based off the British version. Ivers, Long John Silvers, Skippers. However, they have been very far from their British cousins. So the spot that we're in front of right now, Chippery, is owned by an Egyptian guy. He spent time in London and they are recreating the authentic British style of fish and chips, but with the twist. Let's go check it hey, out. Hey lad, where are you going to today? I'm going to the Chippery, Chippery. All right, you guys, we're here at the Chippery. So I've got a clam sandwich right here. Uh, and I have a soft shell crab sandwich. This is something that you're not gonna find at your traditional, you know, fish and chip spot. Here, you got the wild caught cod. Elevated, Elevated fish, fish and chips. chips. I'm eating a fried banana. I've never eaten a fried clam sandwich before in my life. This is a fried banana chip. It's tough because I do think Americans tend to prefer their own version, whether it's a Ivers, a Skippers, a Long John Silver. However, they do have like way cooler items, fried banana chips, you know. Fried Twix. Fried Twix. Yo, here's the hot take, guys. I don't know if Americans view like the British version of anything better than the American version. And that's kind of like an American thing in the sense of, you know, obviously there's some old school beef between England and the US. 
from history. Well, hey, it's kind of like a mac and cheese spot. I think they're fun, they're funky. Um, they're just gonna fry everything. So they do have multiple locations. So clearly they're doing some good business. American comfort food isn't going anywhere, but it's probably gonna need a big update. New York City has always been at the forefront of a lot of food innovation, but the truth is some of it ends up being hit or miss. But as long as people keep trying, they'll eventually get there.